I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it is wonderful to be here. Amen. Every time that we have a chance to be in the presence of the Lord, we know that God is about to do something. Amen. There is no way you can come into His presence and remain the same. Um, I want us to quickly run to the Word of God. And um, I've entitled uh, this uh, message, The Big Reveal. The Big Reveal. Um, and I've taken that in the book of Kings. We're going to read 1 Kings chapter 17, verse, 1 Kings 17 from verse 2. 1 Kings 17 from verse 2. And the Bible says, And the word of the Lord came to him, I'm going to read from verse 1 for a better understanding. Now, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. And then when you go to verse 2, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to him saying, this is where we are interested. We, we are interested in verse, from verse 2. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, go from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan River. You shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to sustain you there. So he went and did in accordance with the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the brook, Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he would drink from the brook. We're going to stop there and then we're going to come back and read verse 7. There are a few words that I want to highlight that are meaningful for tonight's uh, um, uh, preaching. The first one is, in verse 2, the Lord said, go from here and go there. Instruction. The Lord said to the man of God, Elijah, go from here to there. He gives him instruction to where he should go. Now let us understand the context of this reading. There is a drought in the land as we read in verse 1. Verse 1, Elijah says, there will be no rain until I say so. Amen? Amen. Elijah says, there will be no rain until I say so. Unless I say so. So this land is going and experiencing a major drought. There's no water. Now, if there's no water in a land, you're going to have a few problems. One of the first problems you're going to have is, you cannot grow any veg vegetation without water. All your vegetables will dry. That means that there's no vegetables. If there's no water in the land, guess what? The animals cannot drink. If they don't drink, they die of thirst and dehydration. So there's a serious problem of no water. There's a serious problem of no food because the animals are dying and there's no plants. So this land is going through a recession. This land is going through a terrible time. And God comes to Elijah and says, leave from here to there. Isn't it funny that God would give you an instruction to isolate yourself, whereas the logical thing to do would be to stay with everybody. Because listen, when the country is going through such a, a, a situation, the best thing that you can do 
is to stay with everybody so that you can come up with common solutions, right? But God says to him, leave and go. Go away. This is the interesting part. God says to him, I want you to leave from here. Go. And God says, I want you to go and hide. I want you to remember this keyword. The first keyword is leave here and go there. The second one is I want you to go and hide. I don't want you to go and, and, and walk around. I want you to go and hide. So if you are talking of hiding, it means that you are in one place. You are alone. And as I'm reading this, I'm saying, but I mean, I mean God, this is kind of strange. Unless you have faith and trust in God, you cannot obey to such an instruction because it doesn't make sense. Are, are you with me, sis, uh, claims? It's like God says to, to Abraham, I want you to leave your father's house. Okay, that's fine. I want you to leave your neighborhood, your kindred, your entire family, and go where? Huh? Come away as the Bible readers. He says to a place that I will show you. It doesn't make sense. Imagine you grew up in Johannesburg your whole life. Your entire life. That's all you know. And God says, I want you to leave tomorrow. And you say, okay, God, uh, where should I go? Don't worry, I'll show you. Just, just go. So in other words, as I'm walking, then God begins to show me. It doesn't make sense. What makes sense is, Lord God, I don't mind going, but can you show me where I'm going? Amen? I don't mind moving, but can you show me where am I going? But God says, move, and I will show you. Our movement activates the favor of God. Our movement activates the blessing of God. Our movement activates Whatever God has told you to do, or that he will rather he will do for you, will be activated the day you begin to move. And the move I'm talking about is not necessarily a physical move. The day you begin to do something. You don't wait for God to start. God is saying you move. But we are so used to saying, no Lord God, it doesn't make sense. Because, you know, before you leave your house, you already have a plan. You know that I'm going to work. And you even know how you will go to work. You take your GPS and you punch in your, 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 your coordinate, the coordinates. You know where you're going before you leave the house. You don't leave the house and say, by the way, I'm going to Rustenburg. Where is Rustenburg again? As you're driving, then you start punching in. That is not okay. That is foolish. Before leaving the house, you punch in the address. But God says, no, I want you to leave. Then I'll give you the address. My God. And God says to him, I'm going to ask you now. To not go and wonder, but I want you to sit in one place and hide. Listen, let us bear in mind that Elijah is not just anybody. He's a, he's, he's a prophet. Not just any prophet. He's a major prophet. He's a powerful man of God. God says, go and hide. Do nothing. Just wait. <laughs> if we are living in a land of famine, I should at least try to make a plan. Go out and hustle. See if I can find a rabbit. See if I can find a bird. God says, no. Go sit and do nothing. And then look at this. God says, I want you to hide. And while you are hiding, I will send a raven. A raven, beloved, is a bird. God says, I will send a bird that will feed you. A bird will bring you breakfast in the morning and supper at night. <laughs> I mean, Lord, come on. So you mean I mustn't do anything. I mustn't go and hunt for food. You will send me a bird. Not for me to eat the bird, but the bird will bring me food. That doesn't make sense. I want to tell somebody that the instructions of God will not always make sense. Your problem is not uh, understanding the instruction. Your problem is obeying the instruction. A lot of the time, the reason why we don't do what God has asked us to do is because it doesn't make sense. Ladies, can I talk to you for a minute? God tells you, you're praying for a man. God, give me a husband. God says to you, that's your man. In your mind, you want a man who is established. <laughs> Amen? 
Now the ladies are looking down. No, look at me. You want a man who is established. He must come ready made. He must have a car. He must speak well. He must have a house. He must have a good job. He must. And then God sends you someone who is an usher. Okay, no offense to ashes. No, no, no. Someone who is just serving in the church. So God says to you, that's the one. So after church, the sister go and you look in the parking. Which car is he going to take? He's waiting. <laughs> Tall, dark, and handsome brother. So you look at this brother. After church, there's no car. You're like, hey. As he wait, wait, wait. You know, you just, I know, you know, these days people use Uber. Maybe, you know, he's tired of driving. Maybe he left Uber. No. As you're driving, you see him going up the hill. Walking up the hill. You say, Lord, no. This cannot be God. God, your word says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So that is not the desires of my heart. So I say no. We expect God to bless us the way we want him to bless us. But many times, God will bless you not the way you expect him to bless you. I mean, beloved the Lord, how do you expect a bird? Come on. A bird. An unclean bird, but also a bird that is an omnivore. Amen? A raven is ugly. But the raven, it, 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 the raven eats meat. And so God doesn't, doesn't make sense. So you mean that in this, beloved, when there's famine in the land, even the animals are suffering. But God is going to use a bird that can eat meat to hold the meat to give you a steak, a piece of steak. You must remember when you're talking about meat, we're not talking about meatballs. We're not talking mince. It is a T-bone steak. And this raven is also hungry. But he carries the T-bone steak. And he brings it to you for breakfast in the morning. And then goes. Then in the evening he comes back without eating it. I want to tell somebody that God will even use your enemies to bless you. God will use the most unexpected ways. As you are looking left, the blessing is coming to the right. A bird. Uh -uh. It doesn't make sense. But God says go and hide. You must just obey. Go and hide. A few lessons that I learned from here. When God tells him to hide, there's power in hiding. Hiding makes you understand the power of God. Because you are left alone with God. When you are hiding, it's just you and God. Brother Daniel, are you here? When you are hiding, it is you and God. What is hiding? Hiding is when you are facing a situation where you feel alone. Where nobody cares. Where nobody is helping. Where nobody, even the people you expected, your best friends, your uncles and aunties, everybody has deserted you. No one is coming to your rescue. Even the people who promise that they will help you are nowhere to be found. Everybody's phone is off. God will allow that so that you find yourself alone with him. When you find yourself alone with God, you understand him better. Because your focus is on him, not on anyone else. We are distracted because our focus is divided or diverted. God is Jehovah Rapha. But your, 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 your eyes are on a man who cannot heal you the way God does. God is Jehovah Jireh, but your attention is on five people. You've got two boyfriends here for airtime. You've got two there for this, for, for transport. You've got two there. You're a minister of finance who gives you money for rent at the, end of the, uh, you know, at the end of the month. You've got another one that is minister of transport. He's the one in the car. He fetches you and drops you wherever you want to go. Your attention is divided. And God is saying, look at me. Look at me. So the hiding place that Elijah finds himself in is a place of surrender. Amen? The hiding place is a place of surrender. And you will understand that also the hiding place is a place of pouring. Where God pours in you. But as I'm reading this, I'm understanding this. 
God will pour in you, not for yourself, but for others. You will see what I'm talking about now. I don't know if there's someone who is in a hiding place. I don't know if there's someone who is alone right now. The best time and place to understand God and to see the power of God is when you are alone. Not when you are surrounded by everyone else who promises you to help and promises to do that. And God says to, to, to Elijah, I want to show you something. Go and hide. As Elijah is hiding and doing nothing, it, his efforts are meaningless. He's not working, but God is feeding him. Oh, come on, come on, come on. God is about to give somebody a, a miraculous provision. Miraculous provision. Elijah is a man, so he can work. But God says, don't work. I will feed you. I want to show you what I'm able to do. God is about to show somebody what he's able to do. But you have to be alone in his presence. You have to be alone in his presence. God tells him, go and isolate yourself. Isolation is a place of loneliness. But the place of loneliness is where you discover that there's someone who can quench that thirst and his name is Yahweh. Because Elijah doesn't complain. <laughs> he does not complain. God says, go. He goes. Doesn't ask where, he just goes. God says, hide. He goes and hides. He's not hiding under a tree. He's hiding in a cave. God says, hide there. Now, listen, when God places you somewhere, you need to stay there. Stay where God has placed you. Elijah stayed there. I'm sure he thought to himself, a bird. And I don't know whether the bird came at five in the morning or six in the morning or eight in the morning. The Bible just says that he came in the morning and the evening. No specific time. If Elijah said, you know what, ah, this bird, ah, no, Lord, it's okay. I'll go and hunt for myself. The bird would have come and not find him and the bird would go back with the meat. Where God has planted you is where you need to be. And if God plants you in the desert, he will provide for you in the desert. But the problem is you want to plant yourself. You plant yourself in a, in a, in a beautiful garden and you fail to survive. And you say, but Lord God, I'm in Canada. This is where everybody makes it. I'm in the Big Apple. I'm in New York. I'm in Miami. I'm in Atlanta. This is where we're supposed to. But you go there and you die of hunger. Because God did not place you there. The problem with us is we want to place ourselves. And a plant does not plant itself. It doesn't. It is a gardener that plants where he wants to plant. But you know what we do? We take ourselves out of where God planted us to plant ourselves somewhere else. And when you don't like it here, you move. I've seen people who went to countries like, I don't know. They, came, they prayed for God to bring them to Johannesburg. They came to Johannesburg. Then they realized that, ah, this is not where God wants me to go. I think I want to go to Canada. They went to Canada. It didn't work. From Canada, they're like, mm, I think I must go back to Joburg. They come back because someone told them, no, now it's happening. Come back. They come back and it's not happening. They're like, no, I heard Australia. You are moving according to what people are saying, but what are you doing about what God is saying? What is God telling you? Find the word of God. Find the plan of God for you. And where God sends you is where you sit. So my prayer for you is that, you give, that God gives you discernment enough to understand where you need to go. Where you need to be. If God could bless Elijah in a wilderness, in a drought period, God can bless you in Ethiopia. God can bless you in Sudan. God can bless you in Nigeria. God can bless you in Africa. Why are you trying to work, run away from where God placed you? You are here. You are not comfortable here. Because your eyes are in Europe. There's someone in Europe who wants to come here. We know people who relocated. Relocated from Europe to here. From the USA to here. And you look and say, I heard people saying, so you are coming from the US. You have a US passport. And you are coming to Africa. Are you okay? Are you okay? That could be someone that God told Leave everything in the U.S., go to a land that I will show you and I will bless you there. And those people succeed here. Where you are failing, they are succeeding. The problem is, are you where God wants you to be? Because if you are not where God wants you to be, the ravens will come, but they won't find you. They'll go back. 
There are ravens coming every morning and every evening. The problem is, are you where God has placed you? When the ravens come to Joburg, you are in Cape Town. Lord, send me a raven. And God is a forgiving God. He says, okay, raven, just, you know what? He's stubborn, but just go. When they come to Cape Town, you are back in Joburg. <laughs> and then they say, no, now it's happening in Pumalang. There you are in Pumalang. It's happening there. The ravens come to Joburg and Pumalang. The problem is you are watching someone who was placed in Pumalanga being fed by his ravens and you want to eat from someone else's raven. Those are not your ravens. Go to where God placed you and your ravens will find you. Some are eating in Job because that's where God told them to be and the ravens are coming. It is the same thing with the church. When God has planted you in faith and victory but your eyes are always at the church next door. You check there, hey, ravens are giving them meat. You're like, hey, Lord, it's happening there. In our church, there's no ravens. There are ravens. We are eating. The problem with you is you are watching others. So when the ravens come, you are playing there. When the ravens come here, you went for a night of worship there. When the ravens come, you went for a night of prophetic wonders. When the ravens come, you went for a night of one more time. Every time the ravens come here, and then when you come back, you come back after two months, you find someone standing on the pulpit saying, Beloved, my ravens came, and here I have a baby. You're like, ah. But when I was here, it was not happening. When you went. You come back, there's someone. You know, there's a sister who came here. The Lord sent her to faith and victory specifically. To get her visa. She came here. She was looking for a US visa. She didn't even take long in this church. She got a visa. God sent her specifically here. And the ravens brought her her visa. And when she got a visa, God says, now you can go to the US. You are here for 10 years. But Lord, what about me? Every time the ravens come, you are not there. Be planted where God planted you. Stay where God planted you. Don't remove yourself. Because I can tell you that ravens, they are still working. God has not stopped. So when God isolates you, it's not to punish you. He's training you. When God isolates you, it's not to punish you. He's pouring in you. Because you know what was poured in Elijah? Elijah got to see God as Jehovah Jireh in another way, another dimension. Another dimension, a bird that is diligent comes in the morning and feeds you clean steak and bread. And then goes, in the evening comes back, there can only be God. So Elijah got to know that God is the God of the impossible. There is nothing that God cannot do. He learned that in the hiding place. And his faith grew like never before. Are we together? His faith grew like never before. A move by faith is what is required to activate God's motion. Because Elijah moved by faith. He didn't know where he was going, but he just went. God said, go there. He's going to a dry place, alone, alone, with no one. But he moved. As he moved, the ravens began to move. Hallelujah. You are waiting for something to happen, but God is waiting for you to move. Move in faith. Come on. Move in faith. You are here saying, Lord, when you give me the money, then I will register my, 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 my business. God is saying, no, register your business first, then I will give you the money. Amen? You are saying, Lord God, uh, give me a car, then I'll get my license. God says, no, get a license first by faith, then I'll give you the car. That's how God operates. I want somebody to try God and move by faith. Amen? The other thing that I want you to do is when you are moving by faith, you've got to close your eyes. When you are moving by faith, you need to close your eyes. I'm talking about your physical eyes. Because your physical eyes, as long as they are open, they will focus on the impossibilities. They will focus on the challenges. They will focus on the mountains. They will focus on the problem. But when you close your physical eyes, you are able to see with your spiritual eyes the solution. Hallelujah. When you want to move by faith, close your eyes. Because that is when the devil will say, are you sure 
that God told you to move. Look at the drought. It is, there's a drought, but at least here you are surrounded by people. You can come up with a solution here. You are going to a place alone. That's not God. <laughs> he said, David, he wants to kill you. Stay here. Close your eyes. Close your ears. Close your ears to anything negative. Anything that is contrary to the will of God. Close your eyes to any, any mountain that the devil will put in your way. And see the victory. And see the breakthrough with your eyes of faith. Amen? Now, the title of my message is The Big Reveal. Before God can reveal you, he needs to hide you. Everyone likes the reveal. Lord God, I want to be seen. I want, uh, you know, I want people to know me. I want, you know, bless me. Give me this and that. Before God can reveal you, he will hide you. So God hides Elijah. Only when Elijah obeyed the instruction of the Lord did he experience the provision. Obe obedience is a very important factor in this journey with God. Obedience is not understanding. Amen? Obedience is not understanding. So we obey God without understanding. Amen? Our, our, our bishop told us his story and he keeps on telling us how he has overcome so many walls of Jericho, so many Goliaths. But if you follow his testimony, there's an element of obedience in his journey. Amen. For you to leave your business, a successful business, and, 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 and come to a, a foreign land and start ministry, you need to be obedient. It doesn't make sense. You've got a family and kids. You've got a wife and kids. You've got a business that is running well. God says, shut everything. Go and serve me. You need obedience. But when you obey the instruction of the Lord, then you will experience God like never before. Amen? Even your enemies will incline. Even your enemies will incline when you obey. Don't move by feelings. Move by faith. Amen? Now let's go to 1 Kings 18.36. Or rather, let, let, let's stay there. There's something that happened. Before we go to, to, to 18, there's something that happens. In verse 7, we are still in 1 Kings 17, verse 7. It happened after a while that the brook dried up. Oh, Lord. So God sent him to the brook. He said, you will drink water from the brook. He obeys and he goes and drinks water from the brook. After a while, there's no more water in the brook. What kind of God is this? Am I talking to someone? God sent him there. And then the Bible says, it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. We know that there was no land. But God is, I mean, there was no rain. We know that. But God is the one who sent him there. So God should have made provision for him to drink until, until. But no, God allows, <laughs> come on, my God. God allows the brook to run dry. Then the word of the Lord came again. Oh, come on. I will be with you. I will never leave you. God never leaves. He comes back. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, arise. Hallelujah. Arise. And God gives him another instruction. So the first one was, go there. The raven will feed you. But Cherith. Now God says, arise again. <laughs> another ridiculous instruction. Go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. You see how God's instruction, go there and stay there. Even if you don't see anything, stay there. Even if you don't see the, the, the provision, stay there. Even if the husband is not coming, stay there. Even if the provision is, stay there. God is telling somebody, he has placed you where you are for a reason. Stay there. God says, go to Zarephath and stay there. Why doesn't he just say, go to Zarephath and you'll do? Uh-uh. He says, go to Zarephath because God knows us. We like to move around. We go to a place when you see that it's not happening, we move. You go to a church when nothing is happening for you, you move. You go to a land when nothing is happening, you move. That's how you have parents who were moved in the flesh and left wives and children behind and nothing is happening. There's an opposition. My question is, did God send you there? Did God send you there? What kind of God is this who will detach you from your family? You go and stay there for 10 years, 15 years. Uh, I mean, I mean. 
I mean, come on. That is not my God. So God is dividing you. The God who said that no one must divide what he has put together. Now he's dividing you and say, go there. 10 years, 15 years. Lord, send my wife. God is looking and said, did I send you there? And there are some that even heard news that where you left your partner, hey, things are happening. Your partner is now drooling. Lord, you've forsaken me. God is like, I never forsook you because I never sent you where you went. God said, go there and stay there. I want to tell somebody, stay there. Don't run away because it's difficult. Stay there. What does he say? Uh, uh, behold, I have commanded, my God, I have commanded a widow. How does God work? So you can't find anyone else in that land. Someone who has a bit of means. No, God says, I've commanded a widow to provide for you. I've commanded a widow to provide for you. I want to tell somebody that maintaining relationships are very important. Because there are certain times where God will not come down and give you. But he will use someone to give you. That is where you understand that destiny helpers are important. But usually they are not dressed like destiny helpers. This one was a destiny helper. But she comes in the form of a widow. A widow does not look like she can do much for you. But the way God works is the widow needed help. Elijah needed help. So for the widow to trigger, come on somebody, the widow needs help. Elijah needs help. God says these two must meet so that the miracle for the widow can happen and the provision for Elijah can happen. But in order for the miracle for the widow to happen, she needs to be obedient to give to him first. There's a widow somewhere and God says go to the widow, she'll provide for you. Elijah obeys again. And you know the story. He goes and he meets a widow. What do you have in your house? I don't have anything. I've got a little bit of oil, a bit of flour. I'm going to cook and I will die. That was her plan. But little did she know that God had another plan for her to give her life. But her life came through obedience. She obeyed what the man of God told her to do. She gave. So listen. God showed himself as Cherith to Elijah in another dimension. But after that, he showed himself in another dimension to Elijah. Remember, when Elijah tells her, what do you have? What do you have? And she says, all I have is a bit of oil. And he says, go and fetch oil bottles. Even though it is a man of God who was speaking, the man of God was still amazed at what God was doing through him. He was able to discover God in another way. This woman, she brought a bottle of oil and oil never ran out. And Elijah discovers that, wait, the same God who provided for me with a bird, now he's not only providing for me with a widow, he's also making this widow a multi-millionaire. Because remember, when God, when, when Elijah gave her the oil, the, he said, go and sell. Are we still together? He says, go and sell and you will live for the rest of your life. She didn't live drinking the oil. She had bottles of oil not to drink and get full. No, to sell for the rest of her life. In my understanding, this woman was a multimillionaire. Can you see how God can take a widow who is about to die and just inject life into her through her obedience and her life changed upside down just by obeying the word of the Lord? What is God telling you tonight? What is God telling you tonight? Are you obeying? So God shows himself on another level when he sends her to meet this widow at Zarephath. Now I told you that God had been pouring into Elijah. How does he pour? In Cherith, he doesn't have to do anything. His power, if he had any, was useless. God said, just sit there, do nothing, I will provide for you. But when he comes out of Cherith, he is so powerful and anointed that he brings out so much oil. He had never seen done this before. God pours in him and guess what? He goes and pours oil in someone else. You're not kidding me. You're sleeping. God pours in him in Cherith. 
When he comes out of Cherith, he goes, guess what happens? He's busy pouring oil in a widow's bottle. What I'm trying to say to you is, when God isolates you, he isolates you to pour in you. But not for yourself, for someone else. God poured in him in Cherith, and he went to Zarephath and poured in someone else. God pours in you so you can pour out on somebody else. God blesses you so you can bless someone else. In fact, God blesses us not for ourselves, but for other people. I'm telling somebody that God has isolated you long enough, but now is your time for the outpour. God pours in you so you can outpour in someone else. God gives you so you can bless someone else. God poured in Elijah while he was hiding so that he can go and pour into a widow. But it's not all. From the widow, his faith went to another level. And then when we carry on, now, now let's go to, to 1 Kings chapter 18. Let's go to chapter 18 now and see what God is able to do. Hallelujah. Now, we are in uh, 1 Kings 18 and verse 36. Verse 36. Now we are on Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel is when God shows himself in a way that this man had never seen him before. Hallelujah. Verse 22 says, Then Elijah said to the people, I alone remain a prophet of the Lord. Hmm. While Baal's prophets are 450 men. Elijah is so confident. He stands before 450 men. And he says, I alone am a prophet of the Lord. You guys are nothing. Now let them give us two oxen. Let them choose one ox for themselves. Cut into pieces. You know the story. Then he goes to verse 24. Then you call on the name of your God. And I will call on the name of my God. Beloved, the confidence that Elijah had to tell them, call on the name of your God. And I will call the name of my God. Is because he had seen his God at Cherith. Hallelujah. He had seen what the Lord did at Cherith. He had seen what the Lord did at Zarephath. And he knew that if my God can do this, there's nothing he can say no to. If my God can provide to me in this way, there's nothing he will not do. If my God can allow me to pour oil in these bottles and water, it doesn't run dry. There's nothing. He knew God on a level that no one else knew. He was so confident. When God takes you through a challenge, I want you to sit down and think back of past victories. Hallelujah. When God, when you find yourself through a challenge, you need to sit down and say, wait a minute. Has God ever done anything for me? Oh, five years ago, he healed me. Five years ago, he rescued me from an accident. Five years ago, he took me. Three years ago, I survived COVID. The, the other day, I went, they almost kicked me out, but God provided. Those victories will give you strength and confidence to confront new battles. Hallelujah. Now, has God done something for somebody today? Has God done anything for you in the past? Let those victories of the past give you enough confidence to face new challenges. Because I know that you are at your Zarephath right now. You are in hiding place where you feel like, Lord God, I mean, I came to this church. I'm praying. My home be, I'm there. Fasting, I'm fasting. Giving, I'm giving. But still, that situation is still broke. God is saying, wait. <laughs> stay there. Stay there. Tell your neighbor, stay there. Don't move. Hallelujah. Now, what, what will keep you there also? You see, when God sent him to Zarephath and said, a widow will give you, he didn't argue and say, ah, Lord, a widow. He's like, listen, if God instructed a bird, uh, a widow is better. <laughs> if God instructed a bird, a widow is better. He, didn't, he said to her, what do you have? You want to make cake? He says to her, very confident. He says, go and bake me a cake. Hmm? Put the jam and the butter. Make me a big cup of tea. Let me eat. While I'm eating, you must watch me as I eat. And she baked that cake. And as he was eating, he's eating, in, in a, he didn't go hide. No, he came out of hiding. When God gave him the cake, he was not hiding anymore. He was eating in front of her. No more hiding. The hiding was done. Now he's busy eating in front of her. He says, okay, so you've been here how long? 
Oh. Hey, this cake is nice. And they are watching like this with a child. Because he knew that this woman is about to get... Ay, 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 ay. This woman is about... To, her life is about to change. So watch me for the last time. And watch your problems for the last time. I want to tell somebody that what God is about to do... You've never seen. What no eye has seen. What no ear has heard. So he was eating confidently. He didn't feel sorry for her. Because he knew what was coming her way. He says to them... You are 450, but I'm the true prophet. I'm the only one. My God, <laughs> you don't know him the way I do. He says in verse 24, Then you call on the name of your God. I will call the name of my Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. You see how he's taking God? Hey, you, you know, sometimes you need to try God. So, 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 so God, at Cherith, it was a bird. At Zarephath, it was oil. Now, I want fire. I want the fire to come down now. And if God gave me the bread and the meat there, and the oil here, fire is nothing. The next level can only be fire. Elijah says to the prophet of Baal in verse 25, choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first. Yada, yada. He goes down. Let's go to where now. So they cried out. He was looking at them and laughing at them. He was laughing at them. Then Elijah said to the people in verse 30, come near to me. <laughs> Elijah was a very proud man. He was arrogant, but arrogant in the Lord. He says, okay, okay, are you done? Your gods, maybe they went to sleep. Maybe they went to the loo. He was laughing at them. Then he says, okay, okay, all of you stop, stop, come to me. Then he took the 12 stones in accordance with the number of tribes of sons of Jacob to whom they were. He took this and he took that. Hallelujah. And then he called the name of the Lord. But before that, there's something important we need to see. He goes and pours water. He digs in and pours water. We saw this on, on, on Mahombi. He pours water in the trench. Not understanding that that is a seed. Because in the near future, he would need that water to come back multiplied as rain. My God, my God, my God. He pours water. It's a seed that is pouring in there. And then after that, he calls the name of the Lord. And beloved, he does not make a one-hour prayer. Look. Elijah the prophet approached the altar and said, look at this prayer. Oh Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Jacob. Let it be known today. Let them know today that you are God of Israel. And that I am your servant. And I, I have done all things at your word. It means I have obeyed everything you've told me yesterday. I obeyed. Let them know that I'm obedient to your word. Are you obedient to the word? You are praying. Rah, rah, rah. Maombi, you are praying. Are you obeying the word? He says here, let them know that I've done everything according to your word. And he says, answer me, Lord. Answer me. So that these people may know that you, O oh Lord, are God. <laughs> Verse 38. Listen to this. Then fire, the fire of the Lord fell down. The fire of the Lord did what? Fell down and started working. Consumed the burnt offering. The, consumed the wood, even the stones, even the dust, even the water in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell down and they said, the Lord he is God. <laughs> the Lord of Elijah is God. I want somebody to shout, God, you are my God. Let them know that you exist. That the Lord I'm serving is a real God. Ah, beloved, when they saw the fire, they went down on their faces. They started worshiping. When the fire of God falls down, you have no option but to worship him. They went down on their faces, began to worship God. He didn't tell them to worship. But when they saw the mysteries, when they saw the miracle, they worshiped. When your life will change, people will worship God without you telling them to worship. In fact, your life will tell them to worship. They will look at you and say, is this the same person we knew yesterday? It can't be. I need to know your God. 
I want to know your God. But some Christians are giving shame to the kingdom because number one, you don't obey the word. You go wherever you want, whenever you want, without asking God, should I go, or yes or no? And then when things don't work out, people look and say, you see, you Christians, you see? Obey the word. The theme of this year is sanctification. In sanctification, there's obedience. You cannot be sanctified without obedience. What are you obeying to? The instructions of the Lord. Where are they? In his word. Hallelujah. The fire comes down, consumes everything. This is where on Mount Carmel, where the fire comes down. Everyone wants the glory of Mount Carmel, but no one wants the shame and the drought of the cherith. And But there is no Carmel without the cherith. There is no Carmel without Zarephath. You must go through cherith, the drought. You must go through Zarephath and then experience the glory of God on Mount Carmel. We all want Mount Carmel, but no one wants to suffer. No one wants. We say, Lord, I want the power. I want the glory. Have you been through, Mount, uh, through, through ch the Cherith? Have you been through Zarephath? If you haven't, don't worry. You will go through it. So God can train you and equip you. So you may know God and know him better. Hallelujah. And then when you read in verse 41. Verse 41. Now this is after this big miracle. In verse 41. Now Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink. Elijah was, man, Lord God, what a man, what a man. So much faith. He says, go up. He was just giving instructions. When you obey God's instructions, you can also give instructions and demons will obey. When you obey God's instructions, you can also give instructions and situations will obey. He says to Ahab, go up and eat and drink. For there is the sound of the roar of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to drink and to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to top of the camel. Hmm. My God. He had experienced fire. He says, I know that there's fire there. Let me go back there. Never forget where God blessed you. Never forget where God showed himself. There are people who are blessed in this place. People who are blessed in faith and victory. This is where God showed you his fire. But you left. Come back. Elijah, when he wanted to ra the rain, he went to Carmel. He went away to Carmel. And he prayed and said, Lord God, I want to see that rain. But you know why he was so confident in praying for the rain? Because he had sowed water. In the trenches, he sowed water. So he was confident to pray for the rain because he knows that in my stock, in my bank account, there's water. The water that I sold, it's in my bank account. I want it to come multiplied as rain. He was confident in praying for the rain and he experienced the rain without any hassle. The rain came down. I want to ask somebody, are you confident when you pray? Have you stocked up your prayers in your bank account? Have you stocked up water so you can pray for rain? Have you? Have you stocked up oil so you can pray for fire? Amen? Amen? You cannot pray for fire if you haven't stocked up oil. Are we together? Beloved in the Lord, everything Elijah did was obeying the word of God. And when he gave instructions, they also obeyed him. He says, oil fill in, the oil fills in. Fire come down, the fire comes down. Rain come, the rain comes. What a life. What is his secret? His secret is in obedience. Obedience of the word of God. Obedience of the instructions of God. I want to tell somebody that the word this year is not a lie. Sanctification is not a lie. In sanctification, there are blessings. Don't look at it and say, ah, this is sanctification. No, we, we wanted trips. We wanted marriages. This is sanctification. In sanctification, there's trips. There's marriages. Whatever you're looking for, it's found in there. Sanctification is like a pregnant woman. But when she gives birth, she gives birth to healing. She give, one child is healing. One child is jobs. One child is this. One child is protection. In sanctification, everything we need is hidden in there. Because you cannot be sancti live a sanctified life without obeying the word of God. I want to encourage somebody tonight to start living according to the will of God. Obey the will of God. Obey the word of God. And you will experience provision. Like Elijah experienced provision with the raven. You will experience miraculous uh, uh, 
oil filling like he did with the, 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 the widow of Zarephath. You will experience fire as he did to prove the prophets of Baal that there is a God. And you will experience an abundance of rain to come down on whatever you've sown. To give crop food, water, to give plants food. That is, that is multiplication. Hallelujah. That is multiplication. I want us to stand up and pray. Hallelujah. Rebo sayandama. You can give a hand to the Lord. Amen. I want us to pray and say, Lord God, help me to obey. I'm making a decision to obey. The decision must come from you. You make that decision and say, Lord God, I am making the decision to obey your will, your word, your instruction. Number two, I'm going to seek your will for my life. And where you tell me to go is where I will be. I will go. Where you tell me to stay is where I will stay. Let's pray that God may help us to be obedient to his word. To obey his instructions with the help of the Holy Spirit. Raise your voice and begin to pray in Jesus' name. Raise your voice and pray. And make a decision and say, Lord God, I will obey your instructions. Can you raise a voice and pray well? 